Welcome everyone to this episode of Discourse where today we're going to be reviewing Irate, A Rocker's Raging Romance by Alexis Soleil. This story is, I would say, like a coming of age story of this young high school kid. Started at the age of 16 where the story starts. I'm junior in high school. He's a big metalhead. Um, he's into thrash metal. <laughs> yeah. if I'm saying it correctly. Yeah. He reminded me of everyone remembers high school. There was always like the skaters, the punkers, whatever. Yeah. And this kid was one with the long hair, always wearing black, off in the corner somewhere, always writing notes or playing the guitar. Yes. Um, right. <laughs> they would always carry the guitar <laughs> to school. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I knew one back in my day. They call yeah. him Super Steve, who was also a bassist. Oh my God, that's uh, so cute! I love that. <laughs> Super Steve. So, because it was wore a Superman shirt, and he always had a bass. He was always rocking out. You know, he was in his own head, in his own world. A lot and like Ramiro. Ramiro, yeah. who's our main character here, his own world, always writing lyrics, and he didn't care what anyone thought. And he mentioned in the beginning of the book that everyone was scared of him, but. He posed no threat. He was just minding his own business. He didn't care. And he actually liked that because they left him alone. So he has an abusive home life. His father was very religious and... Very strict. Very strict and thought that just because he listened to this type of music that he was into drugs and doing bad in school and he was just like a demon living in his home. But like also he was born on Devil's Day? Yeah, which Halloween Eve, yeah. I guess they call it Devil's Day. Yeah, so, I, had no, I did not know that uh, that's what it was like, called. Like, sorry, Dad, for being born that day. <laughs> like, it wasn't my choice. Yeah, I think maybe he just, you know, because everybody's fighting their own demons. I think mm-hmm. he just had a lot going on personally and just kind of takes it out on Ramiro. I think he's just, like, the, that easy target. And also, his... Romero doesn't like fit into like this little mold that he wants him to be in, right? He wants yeah. him to be like this perfect masculine kid or whatever. And he's mm-hmm. just like not. He's first of all he's a teenager, so he's rebellious regardless. But yeah. he's also like he's very creative, um obviously because he writes music, plays music, mm-hmm. but like he's he's definitely has his own mind. He has his own way of thinking. So I think it just bothers his dad. A ton and that's kind of what triggers him every day and they were always arguing and it was just very like a toxic home environment extremely which is odd because he was this religious guy who's always praying by his bedside but in part of the book he was actually praying that he would shoot his son in the head to rid of rid him of his life but no he'll leave it up to god to yeah. shoot him in the head or kill him off some way it's pretty yeah. awkward <laughs> yeah pretty awkward <laughs> we get uh, song lyrics throughout the book right it made Mm -hmm. like the lyrics made so much sense i was like okay he is so much like his father they have like this similar way of like dark thoughts you know (laughs) these horrible this horrible way of thinking so zooming on ahead the dad kicks him out Mm -hmm. at the age of 17 uh christmas eve and I believe it was because his family gifted him a bass guitar. He was like that built up his anger and he just couldn't hold it anymore. He's like now the family is supporting this demon and his, you know, his... His demonic ways. Yeah, dick, yeah, all that stuff. I don't know. But it kicks him out and he goes to live with his friend Zach, um, their best friends. So he lives the rest of his high school year, um, you know, there with his friend and his dad. And then he goes off to college. He does everything he can just so he could focus on his music. So he doesn't do drugs. He has, you know, flirtations and a girlfriend throughout high school and he's not abusive there either. Like everything his dad saw wasn't there. Right. It's just the music and because mm-hmm. he didn't listen to him and his long hair. I guess the long hair make, means you're evil. Yeah. Or just into like satanic, you know, cult or something. So, so as you said, Rita, yeah, he graduates high school and he heads off straight to college to get a degree in what, like music? Mm-hmm. He meets another bandmate, a guitarist, who mm-hmm. becomes the lead guitarist, and now they have a full band. This rocker's raging romance uh, starts in high school with this girl named Noel. So Noel is the exact opposite of Ramiro. Although which they're is... both very musically inclined, so that's kind of, that's kind of where mm-hmm. they're, the bridge is for them is music. Mm-hmm. Music, and I would say probably intellect too, right? Like, whenever they I mean, did talk, they seemed to be, like, at the same level yeah, and communicated yeah. well enough. 
Mm-hmm. Even though it wasn't many times, but they connected. She's a single child, seemed to get everything she wanted. It talks about, for him for Christmas, he just got that bass guitar from his mom, grandma, and sister who all pitched in. Where this girl, as a single child, got, like... Bed Bath and Beyond and Bath and Body Works, everything she could think of right there. Soap, sweaters, perfumes, <laughs> pink stuff. What and... every girl wants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But they reconnect later on in life and things build up and there's where we see the romance. Yeah, I kind of like... So mm-hmm. when you say they reconnect and stuff throughout yeah. the book, I feel like there's always like a moving forward coming back with them a little bit you know, in their relationship. And I feel like, mm-hmm. I think she did a really great job with transitioning perspectives. So you get mm. Ramiro, you That's get true. Noel, like you get a lot of different perspectives back and forth. And it's not really like stated, but you automatically just already know who's speaking and what's going on mm-hmm. and um, what place she takes you to at whatever part in the book. So I felt like she did a really good job with that. I, it almost made it seem like it would, it could be like a movie. You know, it was almost yeah. like a script or something. It just seemed very theatrical to me. It was really <laughs> cool. I like that part. Because he would be like on stage, like, I hope Noel's enjoying the music. And then yeah. it would kind of cut through Noel looking, at a, looking up at him, like yeah. saying, I don't like the lyrics, but I enjoy the music and his happiness. <laughs> and yeah, it goes back and forth. So definitely the writing was really good. Yeah. I could envision everything. I knew who was speaking. This dad, Neil, his best friend's dad. This guy doesn't get enough credit. He let this kid <laughs> live in his home. He bought him a bass oh, guitar God. himself, right? Uh-huh. They didn't charge him rent. He took him to a concert to watch Ravens and Crows. Kinda Which is got super their... cool. That sounds super cool. Right? Ravens and Crows. I'd yeah. go there for sure. Yeah. It's like awesome crowd, loud. And he got to get a taste and feel of how like a rocker's life is, right? Like doing gigs, the audience yelling, the mosh pit. And in the book, they talk about just jamming out in front of the house in the garage. And there's like a crowd of metalheads like cheering them on. Yeah, right? I, f- I feel like the the author, mm-hmm. she ha- did a really great job with capturing like those moments, right? Mm-hmm. Like the real life rock star life or... Yeah, or the beginnings. Or of. the beginnings <laughs> and all that stuff. I yeah. felt like it was super authentic. I don't know. I felt like maybe she kind of had some sort of, I don't know, involvement or experience with this sort of stuff. Or has kids or something. I don't know. I don't know about you, but myself, I got a guitar when I was in high school. My cousin had the drum set. We're like, yeah, we're going to have a family rock band and we're going to jam out. And after a few weeks, we lost interest. (laughs) Of course. They got too hard. So we're like, yeah, it's not our thing. Where this guy, Ramiro and Zach... Um, and eventually their lead guitarist it was their passion like their life like they lived it every day mm-hmm. and at first i thought in the beginning he doesn't own a bass like how does he even practice how does he learn all this stuff yeah but there's right? just some people who are just born to play mm-hmm. music like so many people can just pick up an instrument and just start playing it like they know mm-hmm. from ear like just hearing things they can you know, play it back. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, he did have his music class in high school where he did get to use the instruments there. Well, I guess, yeah, writing the lyrics, mm-hmm. learning the music, and just mm-hmm. thinking about it every day. So if you don't got money, if you don't got instruments, you still got a chance. I've actually never read a book, like, about, like, rock stars or about, like, heavy metal or, uh, yeah. you know, things like that. So that was actually kind of cool. Yeah, the beginnings of like rock star life and yeah. thrash metal i had to look it up like what is thrash I know. metal because i know like, metal exactly but that? yeah <laughs> i think they mentioned like anthrax metallica and a few others that were like the top you know four or five from back in the day i feel like though that everybody would kind of recognize those names yeah you, just mentioning those names you yeah. would know and you're, you're like, like oh okay, okay. Yeah, yeah it's more like extreme and heavy riffs and just yelling and it seems like they're just yelling out their lungs, but there's actually lyrics and words in there. Yeah. Yeah, this book definitely is like a uh, rocker vibe, for sure. Mm-hmm. I loved it. The dialogue, a lot of the dialogue, oh. I felt like was super true <laughs> to like what a teenager would think and say to like friends and like an abusive father. Yeah. I don't know. I just felt like... It seemed very realistic to me. And I was like, yeah, that's definitely a rebellious teenager right there. And just thinking about stuff. He would talk like, maybe I'll do this, maybe tomorrow, but I don't care. Whatever. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's badass, man. I'll get the tarantula and everyone's going to be so scared of me. Yeah. That's going to be cool. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. funny. Yeah, it makes us laugh because I think I, I talk like that as a kid. I I was like, and you think you're like super cool yeah. and like smart and stuff. Yeah. And then it, it evolves, right? As he yeah, goes into he college. Yeah, and, he definitely yeah. grows and they all grow and things. So Yeah, so another example of you know the great writing that's in there yeah you can see that evolution happening and which is important you always want your main characters to Mm -hmm. you know to grow and to learn things (laughs) yeah i definitely would uh recommend this book i feel like to anyone really but especially probably people who are more like interested in music Mm -hmm. uh maybe even someone who's had similar instances growing up like with abusive families i feel like her showing how he found someone to kind of confide in and who would take care of him and, you know, essentially love him, right? And would help him with his his future. I mean, that's yeah. important to show. There's always someone supportive out there and it doesn't always necessarily have to be your family. Yeah. This is just his best friend and his dad became his became dad, his... his uncle, his mentor, everything. Yeah, they can become your chosen family. Yeah. Sometimes that means a whole lot more. Yeah. Don't give up. Keep going and... Rock out. Thanks for hanging out with us, guys. And be sure to check out Irate, A Raging Rocker's Romance by Alexis Soleil.